Hi friends, so in this blog what I am going to cover is a very important topic that is dealing with XMLs when we are trying to generate or load XML files to and from SQL Server databases. So what I have here in this demo session is I have two tables which is XML EMP and XML department tables. So the tables somewhere look uh, something like this where each of the employee table has a four employee records and there are a couple of departments associated uh, for with each of the uh, employees based upon the department ID so if you look at look at the schema of the table we see that the employee table has a primary key that is employee ID which is seeded one and then we have a foreign key dependency in terms of the department ID so each of the employees should be associ associated with at least one department uh, and, and if we look at the department table we simply have uh, a primary key on the department ID and then we have the department description so that's all we got now to generate uh, the XML for this association for employees and their departments in, in a form of an organization uh, XML that needs to be delivered it's a hypothetical scenario we would be using the for XML the first, remember for XML is, is, a, is the T SQL which generates the relative uh, XML files or, or in, in the XML format for this you know, for the data so what we have here is this query would ret uh, retrieve us XML formatted data for us so this is the or, uh, chart of, of an organization for the employees and the department so if we, if we look at each of the employees and their associated department uh, would be listed here in this uh, XML. Uh, again, I would uh, advise you to go through the MSDNs for how the XML uh, for XML clause works to get to know about all the available options. Currently, what I am using is the, is the auto option with the root of uh, pointing to organization. Uh, since we are com currently associating or, or currently trying to understand how SSIS actually helps us generate such XML files, we will restrict ourselves to this query and uh, the capability and, and, and focus ourselves in, 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 in the capability of SSIS of, uh, for generating such XMLs. So let's go back to X, uh, our SSIS package. What I have here is, is uh, three different ways of generating the XML, same XML file. So first of all, I would be going through the first one, which is uh, execute SQL task. Uh, so if we look at all the XMLs will be generated or all the three demo XMLs will be generated uh, at our XML output path in this directory and we uh, first of all have execute SQL task which uh, has the query which I had listed so so it has the same query here and it connects to the SQL server the results set is, is the one which is uh, you, which you need to pay your attention to so we have the result set altered to XML now and once the result set has been altered there is no parameter the result set would map to a string type variable which has been declared of var XML out this is a string, string type variable which uh, I have declared in the SSIS package if you see uh, so the result set is mapping to this and the output is, is in the form of a string. Next we have is a, is a script task. The script task reads the variable XML out and then it simply tries to write this value to our test.xml file at this, uh, this file, so, uh, this folder. So all we have is, is a simple three line code which simply tries to write uh, the value from this variable, string type variable into this directory and the uh, file so that's all the next option is to generate the option 2 is to generate from data flow task so let's go into drill down into uh, this task so here if we see we have a OLEDB source which is connecting to the database and there is this query which we have actually fed so if we look at this query we simply need to encapsulate this uh, again this, this is the same query which we are simply encapsulating it into uh, another select and, and so that it, it returns a form of a string and not the XML if we run this 
if we run this query it would be returning you an XML while if we run this it, re it would return you a string uh, so we want to encapsulate our data in such format so that's all so next what we do is we are going to use this query and then since the data is being re uh, retrieved or, or returned in the form of an, uh, a unicoded we are just trying to convert that uh, unicoded value into a non unicoded uh, value that's uh, that's all that we have done so we have uh, performed a data conversion and once we are done with this we are writing this value to a file so uh, just to uh, show you how that's done I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete this so right so now first of all to generate the output we add a new flat uh, flat file to this so what I do is XML next we want to generate our files here so what I do is let's all files and then let's just try to create a new file that's all so we are pointing a value to this and then if we go in the columns let's just try to create one and call it XML data this is again string so let's just say 500 and then we have that's all we have done now once we have done this let's add a destination flat file destination to this and let's associate it and then we map map it to the copy of data because copy of data is is the one which is having non unicoded uh, or, or the transformed or converted data uh, column so that's all we are set so this is the second option and the third option is is using uh, again it's using export column wizard so for export column wizard we have a OLEDB source which uh, uses this query so what this query looks like is something like this if you look at this query we are selecting this value that's all so if we look at this query we are getting two columns that is the data and the path from a path at which the data needs to be loaded to so that's all I would advise you to go through my blog on output export column if you do not know what a export column transformation is. So for now this is and, and it gives you two uh, columns data and path. So once we are done again the, for the data column we need to transform or, or, or convert that data uh, from a unicoded to a non unicoded value that's all and then we are using export uh, column transformation so what does this export column transformation is uh, does is it takes the data uh, puts that data or writes the data into this file path column and force truncate is, is to truncate every time every time the file is generated or the package is run that's all this export column transformation does so now we are all set let's try to run this package so remember we should be getting three files here with uh, the XML data so let's just try to run this package perfect so what we see here is, is we have three files let's try to read them this is our test file this is an XML next we are reading test 2 let's see this is how your so this is perfect for us you know this is this is giving you a, your XML data uh, the third one is again your XML file so so that's all if you see uh, these are the, the files so that was uh, a very simplified blog on how you can generate XML files from your SQL server uh, data I would advise uh, advise you to go through the for XML clause in detail from the MSTN and I, and I hope you will develop a very in-depth understanding of the same. Thank you friends. In the next blog we would following this up and trying to learn how to load that XML file back into the database 
tables. Thank you so much.